Dear Victor, I have some thoughts. Readers, after a lot of inner debate and deliberation, I decided that I was going to sit down, turn on Hulu, and watch season one of Love, Victor. It's the sequel series to the 2018 coming out and coming of age film, Love, Simon, where Victor and his family move to Simon's hometown and shares with him via Instagram Messenger his struggles of coming to terms with his sexuality now that Simon and his boyfriend Bram are living in New York as Victor experiences his own coming out story. And I'm just gonna get straight to the point, readers. From what I've seen, this show has a lot of potential. And that's mostly because as it currently sits, Season one of Love, Victor is already a step and a half ahead of Love, Simon, but it still has a little ways to go before it can truly be great. The kicker is that <laughs> it's actually almost there. But before I elaborate, I have to explain why it took me forever to decide if I was going to watch this. And the majority of that is thanks to the movie Love, Simon both the problems that I had with it and how I initially came to the realization that after watching it, at its core, it wasn't for me. So I admit it, a lot of the problems that I had with Love, Simon were definitely personal. Yes, I expected the main character to be a cis white male. I also expected him to be part of an upper middle class family and go to a suburban school that's common in pretty much every teen drama in film and television from the 90s and early 2000s. And yes, that even includes expecting the characters that are portrayed by actors and actresses of color to have no sense of identity, uniqueness, or culture behind them at all. And I get it. The story of Love, Simon was modeled to cater to a specific type of person, despite coming out and being comfortable in your own queerness being a universal thing. By the time I saw Love, Simon in theaters, I'd been out publicly for about three years and accepted my own bisexuality for way longer. Never mind dealing with the experiences that both Simon and Victor face in their respective stories, it took me watching Love, Simon to realize that I had grown past the need for coming out stories and want something more. I want to see queer leads in action films. I want to see an innovator bring well-deserved attention to queer horror, just like Jordan Peele did with Black Horror. I want to see queer characters in media where they don't have to explain why they're queer or where the main character treats their queerness as if it's this mystery that needs to be solved. They can just, they can just be queer because they're queer. I wanted, and still want, normalization of queer characters in stories that the heteronormative population constantly seize themselves in and take for granted day after day. So the combination of Love, Simon being a story containing a lot of those predictable things that I mentioned earlier, as well as me realizing that I'm not the target demographic that they're trying to reach due to me growing past the need for stories like them, despite being queer myself, made me not really find my opinions regarding the narrative necessary to share at the time. That's why when I found out that Victor and his family was going to be Latinx in the sequel series, I found myself becoming way more interested in it than I was before. Especially after learning that the showrunners assembled a writer's room of both Latinx and LGBTQ plus writers to better reflect a voice of relatability that Upon retrospect, I believe Love, Simon didn't really acknowledge. It's still a coming out story, admittedly enough aimed for a whole new generation of people discovering their queerness. But the fact that it was a coming out story trying to step outside of the white light that Love, Simon basked under made me interested in wanting to see how they handled it. Unfortunately, I wasn't really that impressed.
Despite making the lead in his family Latinx, at least 70% of any representation and uniqueness regarding Victor's family, ethnicity, culture, and background, along with other main characters in the show that are portrayed by people of color, is non-existent in the overall season to the point where they could have just been a poor white family instead and literally nothing would have changed regarding the narrative. Outside of the family regularly speaking Spanish around the household, the only episode that really touched on Victor's culture and heritage was Sweet 16 where his family decided to throw a party and his closed-minded grandparents on his father's side of the family decided to visit him and his family for his 16th birthday. And even then, the establishment of him being Latinx was lacking for me. It was limited to showing us a specific type of cake and references to the grandparents' immigration to the States while complaining about how they don't like the direction the world is going when Victor confronts them about their homophobia. Now, don't get me wrong, there are definitely characters of color in stories and settings like Love, Victor that are in positions similar to the ones in this series, just like there are real life POC who fit the bill of Victor, Mina, and Andrew especially in the case of Mina and Andrew. <laughs> Trust me, I'm friends with purebred suburban black folk. There is definitely a disconnect. <laughs> but the difference between the characters and their real life counterparts is that the characters don't convey that there's an identity connected to the skin that their actors are in, unless it's either necessary for the plot of an episode or used as a quick throwaway joke. And even then, in the case of the former, it's the absolute minimum. And I'm not gonna lie, it makes me a bit frustrated. Because in my favorite episode of the season, they spend almost a whole episode exploring found family and being comfortable in one's own sense of queerness by having Victor travel to New York to visit Simon, Bram, and their queer roommates. In the process, he's shown that there's no one way to be gay and is exposed to a variant of mainstream queer subculture that's free of the racist and body shaming toxicity that plagues it in real life. But that ain't none of my business though. But while I saw how much this episode proved that the LGBT plus writers brought onto the show were listened to and how well the topics were handled in this episode, I couldn't help but wonder how much more I would have appreciated the Sweet 16 episode if Victor's background and heritage were handled with the same care as his quest for accepting his queerness. Despite the attempts the showrunners made for the show to have proper representation in the case of its characters of color, the lack of uniqueness felt more like tokenism at the end of the day. So does that mean that the show isn't worth watching? I don't think so. Like Love, Simon before it, Love, Victor isn't my story, nor is its message something that I can benefit from considering how long I've been out personally. But also like Love, Simon, just because Love, Victor isn't a story I no longer seek doesn't mean others aren't seeking it. I also think that with season two being imminent, Love, Victor has the room to properly address the concerns that I have with the show so that the ones who need to see this story can properly feel seen. Not just with Victor and his family, but with Mina and Andrew as well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're, they're black, y'all. Just, just let them be black. After all, Part of the reason why the production of Love, Victor was fine with moving the show from Disney Plus to Hulu is because it allowed them the opportunity to tell more adult stories and cover serious topics when it comes to a teenager coming to grips with his sexuality. So do it. 
Let Victor see the not so flattering side of the queer community when it comes to racism and body shaming. Let him follow Simon and Bram's example of the importance of a found family and possibly find other Latinx queers that are both proud of both their queerness and their culture. Let him be queer and Latinx because he's both. Just because the show is about the former doesn't mean that the latter should only be grazed upon when it's convenient to do so. After all, the reason why the show is about Victor in the first place was because not everyone is like or is as privileged as Simon. So show that. Right now, the amount of LGBT and Latinx writers that helped pin the first season is being held under wraps. However, the wording of the announcement makes it sound like there were plenty more that were tapped on the shoulder to get Victor's exposure to the queer experience and culture correct than his Puerto Rican and Colombian heritage. And that could more than likely be part of the problem regarding the imbalance I felt in their attempt on making this venture better in regards to representation over tokenism. But the fact of the matter is that they have to get that balance of experiences right if they want this to succeed the way the showrunners initially visualized it. That's going to be what separates Love, Victor from Love, Simon. That's going to be what makes Love, Victor better than Love, Simon. At this point, it's the only way. But I digress, readers. Your homework assignment for the day. If you've seen season one of Love, Victor, write in the comment section below what you initially thought about it. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, write in the comment section below a form of media you believe would be better off in the long run if they just did a better job utilizing true representation as opposed to accidental tokenism. Whichever one you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.